only two students have picked up why the teacher may not be interesting no sir no sir it's not the case then uh, what is the case sir maybe they, uh, those guys would be thinking that it may downgrade their pointer so they might have not taken so this. they are interested in knowledge or they are interested in grade sir maybe grade uh, so this is the problem in mtech people want grade people do not want knowledge and with this mentality in second year they complain we are not getting good job see every company they have this perception that mtech students are not interested in learning and that is why most of the companies they do not encourage recruitment of mtech student mtech student is a fact in india companies generally do not like mtech student and one of the reason is mtech students do not do not uh, i mean do hard work they do not do hard work that is the problem most of the companies said that ug students are more hard working than mtech student and they are right see out of 22 students only two students have joined vibration remaining 20 students have not joined uh, because i think sir uh, we have invested no no let me finish remaining 20 students they thought that having vibration they will have to do lot of hard work and uh, now nitesh you can reply but actually i didn't had uh, voices gone out in between things no no no, no 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 i am not i am not uh, uh, saying anything with respect to an individual whatever i am saying this is true throughout india in general unless and until mtech student do not change their thought process perhaps one day will come when india will completely shut out mtech degree there will be only two degree btech and phd no 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 don't laugh it it may happen whatever chatterjee sir says it happens 10 years after it is newton's fourth law okay so maybe you will see in future during the course of your children oh uh, you advise them go for mtech and they will come back and say papa you are backdated there is no mtech in india okay so mtech will possibly vanish out it is gradually turning out to be redundant and another thing will happen in undergraduate undergraduate should not, student should not skip smiling their future will take a take a change what is that change you know there will not be mechanical engineering there will not be civil engineering okay there will be many many engineering together so along with mechanical engineering you have to learn maybe computer science you have to learn electrical engineering so you have to learn two three more engineering in future now you are learning only mechanical engineering in future gradually this barrier will go out <clears throat> and there will be a mixed engineering system major minor major in mechanical minor in computer science major in mechanical minor in electrical engineering it is going to come up fine so you people are very lucky that you are only studying thermodynamics getting good grade okay and this online aditya was telling me that uh, you are the online student uh, are aditya tumhara camera kyun nahi kaam kar raha chai pi raha kya anyway now uh, i will share one i will share one interesting uh, study out of 120 student in six undergraduate of your batch 50% student grade is greater than 8.0 which never happened in mechanical engineering 
in mechanical engineering only 25% students get a grade higher than 8.0 but during this pandemic period maybe our students have suddenly become much more intelligent so one of the positive side of corona virus is that indians have become more intelligent they are getting excellent grades okay so 50% of third year students their grade is greater than cgpa is greater than 8.0 it is very very surprising it has never happened in mechanical engineering that is one thing but out of this 8.0 super intelligent students only 10 students have volunteered to take vibration remaining 110 students they have not taken this subject so this shows the dilemma students are getting good grade but they are not ready to take a vibration because vibration is not only interesting it is a hard working subject you you can learn only if you put effort into it but i can tell you one thing if you really put effort into it it will remain with you throughout your life even 30 years after you will remember ki ek din humne vibration subject kiya tha you will remember it will pay you back that much i can assure you it will pay you back not may not be in terms of money but it will pay you back in terms of experience in industry you will be able to take some crucial decision one day if you learn vibration so <clears throat> let me go back to take out your camera let me go back to the subject that i was discussing yesterday and i had uh, asked all of you to i think you you might you might have done it or i don't know let me go to the subject yes a ppt here so this was the ppt where i stopped yesterday and this was the determinant i was talking about roots of this determinant will give us two frequencies these two frequencies are the modified the natural frequencies of modified system and therefore we must understand that we have changed the system by adding by adding this absorber spring and absorber mass we have changed the system and because we have changed the system our natural frequency has got changed initially this there was only one natural frequency and this was the value now my natural frequencies there will be two natural frequencies and they will be of two different values so let us calculate the new natural frequencies uh, before i come here yes so this gives us calculation of new natural frequencies isko apna haathon se likho kahin pe mistake hai to point out karo we are now trying to calculate two natural frequencies of the modified system how do we get that two natural frequencies of the modified system if we equate denominator determinant to be zero we get a quadratic equation in omega square two roots of that quadratic equation gives us the two natural frequencies so complete derivation is given here समझ के लिखो बिना समझ के मत लिखो आई एम गिविंग यू एनफ टाइम
चेक ऑल द ऑल द लाइन्स केयरफुली चेक ऑल द लाइन्स केयरफुली एंड इफ देर इज एनी मिस्टेक यू लेट मी नो anyone who has checked it completely little bit of mathematics these are ordinary mathematics so this line gives us a quadratic equation and if we solve the quadratic equation we get two roots so you have to expand this you have to expand this into a quadratic equation क्या हुआ इस तरफ से नौ let me go ahead so we get two roots that means if we if mu is given i can calculate this and if i take the square root i get r1 similarly if i calculate this if i take the square root i get r2 now two things must be properly interpreted by you two things listen it carefully omega n1 by omega n will be square root of this omega n2 by omega n will be square root of this obviously omega first ratio will be greater than 1 second ratio we don't know it will be greater than 1 or not it will be we can prove that it will be less than 1 so one of the natural frequency will be above omega n old natural frequency another natural frequency will be below omega n so if we draw the picture we get this graph so 1 1.0 means old natural frequency or original natural frequency 1.0 so when the system gets modified with the absorber spring and absorber mass that single natural frequency it gets shifted to two natural frequencies one above one below let me repeat again one above one below this separation increases as mass ratio increases this is important as mass ratio increases that is mu 
as mu increases the separation increases listen it carefully as mu increases separation increases now now i can explain this graph so look at this graph and look at it carefully and look at it carefully uh ha thoda upar niche ho raha theek hai bye so this graph x axis is uh, excitation frequency divided by original natural frequency that is x axis y axis solid line is x x1 vibration amplitude of origin primary mass and dotted line dashed line is vibration amplitude of absorber mass so we will talk about dotted line later on look at the solid line look at the solid line the solid line is vibration amplitude of the main primary mass so this is how the vibration amplitude will vary after the absorber spring and absorber mass has been put look at it carefully then i will ask you for two three comments now if i ask you to tell me what do you learn from the graph solid line solid line graph what do you learn actually you have to draw this graph in the exam i can ask you to draw the graph anyone who has a doubt how you can draw the graph which formula you will take you will go back to this formula where omega is a variable where omega is a variable okay so you vary omega you will get different values of x1 so accordingly you can draw this graph you get this graph from this graph how do if i say do you learn anything from this graph yes sir frequency ratio should must be right side of root 2 as much as possible for then a root 2 has nothing there root 2 has nothing here root yes sir root, is no, no, no 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 in sure. this graph root 2 root 2 has no meaning in this graph let me go down in this graph root 2 has no meaning root 2 root 2 has no meaning in this graph so the range where r equals to 0.762 and r equals to 1.311 that is like a sort of a dangerous zone so, even though so, we require 
No, no. Okay, I will explain. This is what does it tell us? That the beam doesn't vibrate at all. It will not vibrate at all. Fine. So if when my excitation frequency now pura graph mujhe kya batata hai nobody has looked at it the whole graph tells me what practically practically see i started my discussion saying excitation frequency is matching with omega n so the ratio is 1.0 I started my discussion yesterday and what I told that when omega excitation frequency is exactly equal to natural frequency, the vibration of the motor or the machine will be very, very large. That vibration can be brought down to zero if we attach an absorber mass and absorber spring. So when we attach an absorber mass and absorber spring and we tune it, listen, simply attaching an absorber mass and absorber spring is not enough. We have to tune it. What is meant by tuning? K2 by M2 equals to K1 by M1. That is called tuning. So if, I, if we tune it, then the machine vibration amplitude becomes perfectly zero. So this is the condition that is zero vibration if the absorber is perfectly tuned. Fine. However, now suppose excitation frequency changes. If excitation frequency remains exactly equal to natural frequency throughout the day, we have no problem. Machine vibration remains zero throughout the day. But you don't know because uh, and nobody will tell you in industry this frequency keeps on changing during 24 hours. Can anybody explain me why? I know you have not seen any industry. So when we turn on and turn off the motor then? Huh? So when we turn on the motor or turn it off then like... No, the no, we don't turn on and turn motor uh, too many times in a day. We keep the motor running throughout the day. Maybe then because of the change in load to the motor. Okay, let me assume load also remains same. Motor is running at steady state load throughout the day. Still... RPM will change. Why? These are common sense answers. Ah, bolo bolo, shrabba bolo. Frequency supplied will uh, vary. Correct. Line frequency changes throughout the day. Why? Again, why? Sir, because of the demand of electricity, like in daytime, we have more demand and at night we reduce it. So accordingly it changes. So if the demand is more than what will happen to the frequency, it will increase or it will decrease? Sir, it shall decrease. It will decrease. So this is a very, this is a very useful information all engineers should know. And it is not written in any textbook. That all our calculations are based on assumption that line frequency is 50 hertz throughout the day. It is wrong. In India, the situation was very, very bad 30 years before. And particularly in uh, some of the states like Bihar. But today, because of the national grid, situation has improved. Today, the variation has been restricted within more or less 49.5 to 50.5. There was a time when frequency used to go down to 47 hertz. But now with national grid, it has improved. Frequency variation has been restricted. 
within a small range 49.5 to 50.5 hertz but even this is 2% variation 2% variation means a motor that runs at 1470 rpm may <coughs> change its rpm by 2% which is nearly 30 rpm okay so during the day and this frequency change occurs because of the mismatch between generation and demand between the generation and supply during daytime sup supply is less than demand actually this is wrong let me put it this way uh, let me correct my sentence S demand becomes maximum during evening because suddenly the domestic demand comes in. During daytime, it is mainly industrial demand. During evening, domestic demand means lighting, street lighting, house lighting, they comes up. So 5 o'clock in the evening to 9 p.m., demand remains maximum. And after 12 p.m. or 12 midnight, all lights get switched off and all in the half of the industry also do not work during the night so it is the night time when the demand is much less frequency jumps up when the demand is less frequency jumps up and when the demand is more frequency comes down so because of this this excitation frequency throughout the day may not remain exactly here it keeps on fluctuating here and there now when it keeps on fluctuating what will happen this zero vibration will no more remain zero vibration it will change to some finite vibration here and there now how much finite will it be large vibration again it depends on this frequency lines if the frequency lines are very close, what will happen? A small variation in excitation frequency will again invite the trouble of resonance. Abhi hamara problem kya hai? I have killed original resonance, but I have now created two new locations of resonance. So resonance will again occur. If by chance my excitation frequency comes here, or my excitation frequency comes here. Resonance will again occur. But these new resonance points are at a distance. So I am safe. But suppose these new resonance points are not much away. They are very close. What does it mean? That throughout the day, sometime I am safe, but some other time I am in trouble again. Because resonance occurring either left hand side or right hand side which side resonance will be more probable left hand side resonance or right hand side resonance common sense left hand side sir. left hand side because it is closer okay so all using an absorber is not the permanent solution i may again land up into resonance problem if these two frequencies are very close so I have to keep these frequencies away. What does it mean? What does it mean? How can I keep the frequencies at a sufficiently large distance? What as an engineer I will have to do? Increase the value of under root uh, K1 by M1. That is mathematical answer. I said what, what, what I will do as an engineer. You are correct. But that is mathematical answer. You are fully correct, but you have to extend that mathematical result into a sentence. What is that sentence? How do how do you get it? Mathematically, I have to increase. But how will we do it? Having large difference between M2 and M1. I agree, but how will you have that large difference? Between M2 and M1? No, that is not the correct answer. That is not the correct. Can answer. we attach like mass to the bar? No, 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 no. Bar. This this will give you the answer. You increase m2 by m1 ratio. 
I have to increase M2 by M1 ratio. How? Let me tell you. But before I come back here, let me again go back. Let me again go back here. <clears throat> what is the tuning formula? What is the tuning formula? K2 by M2 should be equal to K1 by M1. That was my tuning formula. Take it. Yes, so now tuning formula has a problem. What is the problem? Tuning formula tells me K2 by M2 ratio. It doesn't tell me K2 kitna hoga, M2 kitna hoga. Okay. So I can have more than one selection of K2 and M2. I can go for a high K2 with a high M2. Or I can go for a low K2 with a low M2. In a tuned condition, K2 by M2 has to have some, some ratio, maybe 1.0 or may, suppose. So I can go for K2 is equal to 1, M2 is equal to 1. I can go for K2 is equal to 100, M2 is equal to 100. So tuning ratio doesn't tell me the absolute value of absorber stiffness K2 or the absorber mass M2. It doesn't tell me. I have now lot of possibility. Konsa possibility of lena hai? That is decided by this graph. In this graph, I have to decide the separation. Ki mujhe kitna separation chahiye. Suppose I decide that separation should be 20%. What does it mean? If separation has to be at least 20%, this is the point. This means my mass ratio is 0.22. This should be more than to understand what I am saying. So, I have to now decide how much safe distance I must have. So, suppose I decide safe distance is 20%. That is 0.2. So, I must have mass ratio at least greater than 0.22. So this mass ratio, M1 is already known. So this mass ratio will give me M2. And because tuning ratio is known, now I can calculate K2. And now that I, I calculate K2, I can come back in this formula. And I know how much will be secondary mass vibration. How much will be secondary mass vibration. So I can calculate, I know vibration of the primary mass is zero, but secondary mass will have vibration. How much? Now I can calculate it. So this is the whole procedure. Ek minute pura socho. You can ask me a question, but pura jo bhi humne bata hai, ek minute socho. So in dynamic absorber application, as an engineer, we have to take certain decisions step by step, not at random, step by step. What is the first decision we have to take? We have to identify and find out that large vibration is happening because of resonance situation that we have to first verify. How do we identify? We calculate natural frequency from the given data. So as an engineer, you have to ask what is the mass of the machine? What is the dimension of the beam? What is the material of the beam? With all this information, you can calculate natural frequency. Then you have to ask and get the data. What is the RPM of the machine? And then you have to confirm that the problem is because of resonance. Step one. Now that the problem is because of resonance, 
the first step as an engineer you will do is confirm that the vibration is because of unbalance it's not easy it's not easy it's a very very expert job so confirm that the vibration is because of unbalance and if the vibration is because of unbalance go for balancing that is step one <clears throat> now how to confirm that this is because of unbalance and how to do the balancing generally requires uh, an expert ordinary engineer cannot do it so this step let us keep a, keep it aside you know that this can be done but you are not that much expert to do it so what do you do you then go for second option what is the second option go for an absorber so you have to find out some value of k2 some value of m2 how do you calculate k2 and m2 you decide safe distance in the graph and that depends on variation of your excitation frequency so if indian grid gives us two percent variation you say my frequency gap should be 10 percent or 20 percent now larger is the frequency gap better is the design however larger is the frequency gap means here higher will be the ratio m2 by m1 unnecessarily you have to go for a large secondary mass now remember primary mass is already large the, the mass of the machine may be as much as 1000 kg so even a 2% if the ratio is 0.2 means 200 kg it is too much 200 kg absorber mass is too large so we cannot simply go for a large mass ratio we have to go for minimum mass ratio fine so that depends on how much the excitation frequency varies here so this is how this is done but now let me come back to let me go to the next discussion all our discussion that happened since yesterday there was no damping there was no damping remember that now we, i can not only add a secondary mass secondary spring i can also add a artificial damper here i can add an artificial damper where i can manipulate damping because this is artificial damper like a suspension system in our vehicle this i am adding so i have a control i can change k2 i can change m2 i can change c2 so the next idea came up from engineer during 1950 that why not let us introduce a damping here but the moment we introduce damping equation becomes far more complicated and this solution is there it was carried out by a famous mechanical engineer one of the best mechanical engineer during middle of last century j p den hartag okay in the beginning of last century the best mechanical engineer was timosenko sp timosenko then people regard jp den hartag as the very good engineer during middle of the century so jp den hartag he did all the calculation in presence of damping and he found a very interesting result that result is explained in this graph kuch samajh mein aa raha hai ye graph dekh ke he plotted the graph in presence of damping so these are damping values these are damping values no a point 10 is not damping value kya hai dekhna padega uh, 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 uh. let me go down 0 0.10 is not damping value
नहीं पॉइंट वन जीरो इज नॉट टैम्पिंग दे आर टैम्पिंग वैल्यू लेकिन पॉइंट वन जीरो क्यों बोल रहा पॉइंट थ्री टू क्यों बोल रहा सी बाई सी सी ए जीरो है ठीक है ठीक है इधर कुछ ऊपर नीचे हो गया होगा एनीवे सो व्हाट डेना टेक फाउंड इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग आई थिंक दिस वैल्यूज आर रॉन्गली गिवन डेना टेक फाउंड दैट इफ डैम्पिंग इज जीरो देन द प्राइमरी मास विल हैव दिस मच ऑफ इट विल बी परफेक्टली ट्यून्ड मतलब इट्स वाइब्रेशन विल बी कंप्लीटली किल्ड इफ दिस इज माय एक्साइटेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी हाउएवर इफ डैम्पिंग इज जीरो primary mass vibration becomes infinitely large if by mistake excitation frequency comes close to first resonance frequency or it it goes second resonance frequency so in absence of damping primary mass is perfectly okay at this frequency but trouble again comes here at lower natural frequency or at higher natural frequency so in application where this excitation frequency we have no control it can vary over a wide range suppose it varies over a wide range kahan pe motor driven nahi ic engine driven suppose it's a vehicle so in the vehicle the the velocity can vary widely so wherever the excitation frequency can vary over a wide range this dynamic vibration absorber without damping is not a good solution because sometimes it is having zero vibration some other time it will have a large vibration so zero damping nahi chalega so suppose i add damping the moment i add damping then at tune condition my vibration is no more zero it is finite but near the resonant frequency the vibration is not finite it is finite so with damping i get a graph looking like this fine with damping i get a graph looking like this this graph is better in the sense that if the frequency varies near the resonance also i have a finite amplitude i do not have infinitely large amplitude now this interesting phenomenon now question comes how much damping i should go for okay so damping is uh, desirable if my excitation frequency varies over a wide range damping is desirable rather than no damping but the question comes how much damping i should go for so that concept if you are interested you can read there is a paper by mechanical i'll give you that paper if you are interested i'll give you that paper to everybody but that is for your uh, study i cannot call it a part of vibration syllabus but that is what engineers are doing now today engineers put damping in vibration absorber they don't talk about undamped absorber undamped absorber is perfectly okay where excitation frequency does not change too much but if excitation frequency changes too much we have to go for damping we select an optimum damping and we uh, go for optimum damping fine so this paper i will give you you can study it so dynamic vibration absorber is over this bit phenomena mathematics i will give you this is double pendulum okay if i can tune the values of the pendulum properly then the vibration looks like this that means sometime the vibration is going up it is becoming and some other time it is becoming zero so this increasing decreasing in a periodic pattern is called bit phenomena so this mathematics also i'll give you but next class i will start a new chapter torsional oscillation theek hai to aaj itna hi
इतना पीपीटी हम भेज देंगे कुछ पूछना है किसी को वी आर फाइव मिनट्स वी कैन हैव सम डिस्कशन so can you tell it again that how much uh, gap between m1 and m2 should be there hmm kuch puchna hai so can you tell it again that uh, how much how we know that uh, how much gap to keep between m1 and m2 Oh, I told you. Uh, let me go back to the graph. Uh, so you have to find out how much frequency varies. Say I have given you example. In suppose it is induction motor, then this frequency variation will be linked to line frequency variation. So line frequency variation forty nine point five to fifty point five. It is two percent. So two percent means. you take this gap as total 2% but 2% will not be enough you take a factor of safety five times so make it 10% then you go to this this graph in this graph 10% means 5% down and 5% up so you go for lower band first because upper gap is greater than lower gap so you find out where the lower gap is 5% mat matlab 0.95 so wherever 0.95 intersects that should be my m2 by m1 ratio and that gives me m2 m2 aane ke baad k2 by m2 is tuning ke liye malum hai k2 nikal jayega so okay. this graph is needed a graph chahiye samne even if this graph is not needed you can calculate mu from this formula r2 ka value 0.95 hona chahiye for 10% gap r2 should be 5% away from omega n that means omega n2 by omega n should be 0.95 so you you equate it if this is 0.95 how much should be mu so without the graph also you can calculate if i say 10% gap that means r2 will be away from omega n or 1 by 5% so to a ratio ko 0.95 set karna hoga omega n2 by omega n 0.95 matlab left hand side is 0.95 square So 0.95 square is equal to this. You can calculate mu. So mu is equal to m2 by m1. You know m1. You can find out m2, and then you can calculate k2. And once you can calculate k2, I can ask you that if you know k2, you can calculate x2. That is vibration amplitude of. Although vibration amplitude of mass one is zero. vibration amplitude will be there for mass 2 so uh, so so much of calculation i can ask in exam aur kuch fast to koi taiyar hai sunday class ke liye otherwise i'll give you off so what is the opinion ठीक है आई आई नॉट टेक एनी क्लास टुमारो बट आई विल गिव वन प्रॉब्लम सीट ऑन लैग्रेंज इक्वेशन सो आई विल गिव यू द पीपीटी टुडे एंड आई विल सेंड अ प्रॉब्लम कलेक्शन ऑन लैग्रेंज इक्वेशन सो ट्राई टू सॉल्व देम ठीक है चलो आज हो गया यू कैन लीव